what really happened to the American paratrooper made famous by the movie The Longest Day, who on D-Day remained dangling from the bell tower of the church in St. Mary Glees as he watched his friends and comrades being killed below him. In my opinion, this is one of the most iconic and moving scenes in World War II movie history. In this video, we attempt to uncover the true story of this event. His name was John Steele, or Big Ass John to his friends. He came from a city called Metropolis in Illinois on the Ohio River. Yep, allegedly the inspiration for the hometown of Superman. And it's not lost on me that Metropolis already had its own Man of Steel. Like Superman, John Steele was a jaw-dropping man, tall and thick-set. Unlike Superman, however, he loved to drink lots of fresh beer and he practiced fly fishing and he listened to New Orleans jazz. John Steele is forever tied to the French town of St. Mary Glees. But after the war, John would write letters to the people of St. Mary Glees, which were full of warm words for this distant land that he had first seen from the sky one night in June 1944. In one of his letters, nicely signed John of the Steeple, he said how grateful he had been to have met the kind people of this beautiful town. So as we said, John is a legendary figure in St. Mary Glees, and his effigy still hangs from the bell tower in the town square. An industry has been built up around his story, and in the summer you'll see hundreds, if not thousands of tourists being regaled by the story of this paratrooper dangling from the tower on that day of days. A restaurant catering to the mostly American tourist even bears his name, L'Auberge Jean Steele. But first, a huge thank you to World of Warships for sponsoring this video. World of Warships is a free-to-play naval warfare theme game available on PC. New content is released every month, whether it's new ships, in-game nations, cosmetics, or even new ship classes. You can always count on enjoying fresh gameplay experiences in World of Warships stunning 12v12 arenas. Join the battle as we commemorate the heroes of D-Day in World of Warships with a special 80th anniversary event. Engage in epic naval warfare as you relive one of history's most pivotal moments on the sea. Command new legendary vessels, strategize with your fleet in new missions, and dominate the waves in thrilling battles inspired by the events of June 6, 1944. Participate in exclusive in-game events, unlock commemorative rewards and pay homage to those who changed the course of history. Now I genuinely love this game, the graphics are top notch, you have access to different ship classes and gameplay modes. This is a truly massive game. With World of Warships you can command a massive naval fleet featuring some of history's most iconic war vessels and unlock new ships as you prepare to dominate the seas. Download World of Warships using the link in the description below. Don't forget to use the code DDAY80 to get for free 200 doubloons, 1 million credits, 7 days of premium account time, a free ship after you complete 15 battles, and free special D-Day missions only available for a limited time. This is applicable to new users only. Oh, and did I mention that the game is also available on consoles? So let's have a look at the man himself. Who was John Steele? Well, in the 1930s, the Steeles were a model family living in Metropolis, Illinois. His father, who was also named John, piloted freight boats on the brownish waters of the Ohio River. He was a born captain, a man of authority who transported cargoes of wood or coal while his wife, Josephine, took care of the traditional wooden house. John, the future paratrooper, was the eldest of the siblings. He was a tough guy. He was a good American football player. In his family photos, he looks a little bit like Forrest Gump with his straight bust and his high forehead. But when the United States entered the war at the end of 1941, his fate was to change forever. While one of his brothers opted for the Navy and another for the Army, John joined the paratroopers at the ripe old age of 29. In the spring of 1943, John Steele deployed to North Africa with the 82nd Airborne Division. Very soon, the missions followed one after another. 
with the first jump on Sicily, during which John actually broke his leg, and then a second on the Naples region, although without any injuries this time. Steele and his companions from Company F then took the boat to the United Kingdom, where the Allied forces were preparing for the invasion of Europe. In a letter to his family, he wrote that he played golf on his days off, and he managed to earn a few dollars by cutting the hair of his comrades, and of course he would charge the officers extra for the pleasure. On the night of Monday the 5th of June 1944, Operation Overlord was launched by the Supreme Allied Commander General Eisenhower, who stated, OK, let's go. Approximately 15,000 paratroopers of the 82nd and 101st Airborne Divisions took off from England with identified drop zones. Steele, like hundreds of others, was to jump on the outskirts of St. Meriglise and take control of the strategic crossroads town to facilitate the offensive planned at dawn on the coast, some 10 kilometres away at Utah Beach. He climbed inside the transport aircraft and he headed for Normandy. Inside, everything was silent, he said. Some of us were drowsy from these pills that they gave us, but we knew we were going to a place where it would be a little hot. The weather conditions deteriorated and a thick cloud bank was encountered off the coast. This played havoc with the transport aircraft. The pilot flying Steele's stick was inexperienced, as many of them were. Fearing the flak and not entirely confident of their location, some of the pilots ordered the paratroopers to jump right above St. Mary Gleis. When they jumped out, they began to land in and around the village, but all hell would soon break loose. Some paratroopers of the 101st Division were dropped there by mistake. Amongst them was Lieutenant Dick Winters, Carwood Lipton and Denver Bull Randleman, among others. And they were more than 10 kilometres from their objective at St. Mary de Mont. During his descent, John is wounded on the left foot, probably by a flesh-ripping jagged piece of steel. But he continues his descent towards the central square, where a building is on fire and illuminating the surroundings. While trying to avoid the blaze, he crashes onto the church. His parachute clings to one of the sculptures erected at the base of the bell tower and leaves him suspended at a dozen meters or more from the ground. He tries to cut himself loose, but his knife escapes his grasp and falls along the wall onto the ground. He is now more helpless than ever, a mere puppet at the mercy of enemy fire, and he was forced to play dead. The hours passed, as many as three hours, still with no support in sight. But finally, two Germans who were positioned inside the bell tower, Rudolf May and Rudi Escher, spotted him. They cut down the lines of his parachute and enabled him to get to the ground. Steele was taken prisoner and held in an enemy command post, along with six other Americans. But nobody has ever explained how he made it to the ground. Four days later, he escaped by sneaking through a window of the command post. The German route was such that he succeeded in making it back to the front line before being evacuated to the United Kingdom. Once he recovered from his foot injury, he took part in the unsuccessful Allied military operation known as Operation Market Garden. This is the account as John Steele explained it. On his return to the US in September 1945, John spoke little of the war. Like his relatives, he was grieving the loss of his beloved brother Norman, who was killed in Germany in April 1945, right as the war was about to end. And when he came back to his home state of Illinois, he worked in various trade jobs before working for electricity companies. Around 1945, an astonishing letter reached him, a turning point in his life really. An Irish-born journalist called Cornelius Ryan was writing a book, D-Day. He was soliciting the help of hundreds of survivors of these memorable hours. They all received the same standard questionnaire. It was up to each of them to provide biographical and personable memorabilia, if they so wished to do so. So to the question, where were you on June the 5th, 1944, at midnight, the ex-paratrooper Steele replied in capital letters, Suspended on the bell tower, under the cornice of the church of St. Mary Glees. That's it. That's all he wrote. For the author, such an account was a gift from the gods. Nobody had heard this account until that point. The book, entitled The Longest Day, was published in November 1959 in the United States. Cornelius Ryan devoted 
about 20 lines or 300 words to The Misadventures of Steel based on only those 12 words from the original statement by Steele. But this passage was enough to make him known worldwide. In the following months, the book was such a success that a movie began to take shape. The director, Daryl Zanuck, would have a cast full of stars. John Wayne, Robert Mitchum, Richard Burton, Sean Connery, Henry Fonda, Red Buttons, the list goes on. In St. Mary Glace, he puffed out his chest on the church square, he signed autographs, he toasted with workers, he sang in bars. In the United States too, John Steele gained notoriety. But Steele suffered from serious health problems, and as of 1961, a cancer of the throat forced him to undergo severe treatments, followed by a tracheotomy. In May 1969, at the Fayetteville Veterans Hospital, with a cigarette in hand, he told his story for the last time to the local newspaper. He died at the age of 56. Allegedly, he dreamed of being buried in St. Mary Glees, or even at Arlington Cemetery. But we'll never know this as he took his secret to the grave. Instead, he is buried at the Masonic Cemetery in Metropolis. After his death, historians and researchers began to question the feasibility of Steele's story. Is it really possible that a soldier could have hung from the bell tower? Why were there no other witnesses? And how did he get down? There were plenty of questions. The first question relates to the original story, a statement of only 12 words that generated an inflated 350-word account from the novelist Cornelius Ryan. There was also no evidence that these two men corresponded at any other time to provide additional detail. So when we look at the other accounts to corroborate this event, only one person positively identifies John Steele as hanging from the church and that's Ken Russell. Now, Ken Russell fell on the church almost at the same time as Steele. And a second soldier, John Ray, fell on the ground in front of them. But John Steele never mentioned these two paratroopers, not once. For decades, Kenneth Russell remained in the shadows, humbly leaving John Steele to monopolise the front pages. In June 1944, Russell was only a 17-year-old man. He lied about his age to join the army. As soon as he was dropped above St. Mary Glees, he says he saw Germans running, aiming and shooting. A building was on fire. Fortunately, his parachute dragged him towards the church and his gear was caught on a protruding piece of stonework about six metres from the ground. While Russell was trying to seize his knife to free himself, a third paratrooper from Company F, Sergeant John Ray, landed at his feet on the ground in front of him. Before he had time to straighten up, a German approached him and shot him. He was hit in the stomach, and the sergeant collapsed. Thinking he was dead, the German immediately pointed his weapon at the two Americans, John Steele and Kenneth Russell, who were both hanging, allegedly, from the church. Russell expected to die without even setting one foot on French soil, but Sergeant John Ray, in a final burst of life, managed to kneel and take out his Colt 45 to kill the German. So if John Steele was hanging on the bell tower with a view of these events, why did he never talk to his relatives, to his comrades, to Cornelius Ryan about these two other soldiers? Kenneth Russell sadly died of pneumonia on the night of June 5th and 6th, 2004. Yes, that's right, 60 years after D-Day. For years, he had had correspondence with Robert Clapper, the cousin of Private Ladislav Clapper, one of the members of Company F who died on a tree of the St. Merigli Square. In an unpublished letter, Russell was astonished with a bitter irony that almost all the surviving paratroopers claimed to have jumped into the heart of the village. In reality, there were not nearly as many, maybe 10. According to Russell, there was a code of honour between the veterans, recalls Robert Clapper. There was a rule that you should not contradict a comrade in arms, even if they have distorted the truth. So did Kenneth Russell corroborate the Steele story so that his comrade would not lose face? Russell was definitely there, but was Steele. So what do you think? Was the story embellished and did it even happen? And actually, does it even matter? I don't make this video to discredit John Steele or any other veteran. I'm serving in the military myself and I know from personal experience how personal accounts can vary, even over a very short time. In 2020, for example, I was in the middle of a rocket attack in Kabul in Afghanistan. And when I spoke to the individuals who were there with me at that time, all four of those individuals had different recollections of their own experience. And this was only one, perhaps two years after those events. Imagine how those stories would deviate 20 years later.
And in a way, does it even matter if John Steele had hung on the bell tower or not? He volunteered to fight for our freedom. He jumped into Sicily, he jumped into Normandy, and he jumped into the Netherlands. He was wounded twice, so as far as I'm concerned, no historian can tell me that this man was not a hero. I'd really love to know what you think. Please drop me a comment. I genuinely do read them all. Once again, thank you to World of Warships for sponsoring this video. Without sponsors, these videos just are not possible. Don't forget to click the link in the description below and to use the code DDAY80TH. Until next time.